أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين بائث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد ما صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يتخذ من دون الله أندادا يحبونهم كحب الله والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We then send our congratulatory messages to our 12th and living Imam al Hujja Jalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and to each and every one of you as we gather on this evening to celebrate the birth anniversary of the Lady of Light the daughter of our beloved Prophet Sayyidah Fatima bint Muhammad alayhim afdalu salatu was salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are blessed in this world with the ma'rifah of Sayyidah insha'Allah and that we are blessed with her shafaat in the hereafter insha'Allah our belief, you know, when you look at the belief in Islam and what has been taught to us, uh, there is no doubt the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented His teachings that the best creation ever to be put on this earth is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He was the teacher, right? He was the guide. Um, and therefore everybody's responsibility was to model themselves after the Prophet, hence he was the best creation. And therefore subsequently everyone who believed after that were the students of the Prophet. Yeah? And there is no doubt again when it comes to our belief that the two greatest students to have ever existed was Imam Ali and Sayyidah Fatima alayhima afdalu salatu wa salam. Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad, hence Ali has been given the title of Amir al Mu'minin, yeah, the leader of the believers. And Sayyidah has been given the title of Sayyidatun Nisa al Alamin, yeah, the, the queen or the leader of all the women of paradise or of the worlds. Right? And so these two titles show us the personality of these people and how equal they were as far as their status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this status is very eloquently you know painted or described by our sixth imam when he says Sami'atu that he said Lawla anna allaha tabaraka wa ta'ala khalaka amir al-mu'mineen alayhi salam li Fatima he says that if Allah had not created Ali for Fatima مَا كَانَ لَهَا كُفُوًا عَلَىٰ ذَهْرِ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ آدَمْ مِنْ دُونِهَا He says there would not have been an equal for Fatima from Adam to the rest of creation. Yeah? And this was their status. Hence when we look at their lives in any way, we find guidance that is there for us on how to become a better believer. And that's the goal, right? The goal should be to try to become a better believer every day. I think one of the biggest mistakes that we make is complacency, you know, where we are satisfied with where we are. And that's part of the, the world that we live in. You know, we are in a rat race, as they call it. Every day it's the same cycle. And unfortunately, that same cycle 
and that same sequence spreads into our faith as well. But the reality is, is that we have a job to try to become better and try to and have a desire to become better. And so when we look at their lives, we find that there are instances where we can tap into their existence to try to see how we can improve our existence. And inshallah, we will try to do that today when we look at the life of this great lady. One of my favorite traditions, you know, it was recited in this mankabat today, right now. Um, it was recited in Urdu, but it's a tradition that is narrated by Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Salli ala Muhammad. <coughs> <coughs> where the Prophet is reported to have said, Inna Allaha la yaghdabu li ghadabi Fatima wa yarda li ridaha. He says that indeed, you know, if you, if you know Arabic, there are, there are sometimes words that are used in Arabic to describe emphasis, right? And in this sentence, and in, you don't say that in English. Right? Like you wouldn't say surely, verily. You would be like, that's enough. Surely was enough, you know. But in Arabic, it works, you know. So here it says, Inna. Inna is surely. Inna Allaha la yaghdabu. This lam again is another emphasis, yeah. That means surely, most definitely, Allah is angered when Fatima is angry. And Allah is happy when Fatima is happy. Subhanallah, yeah. I tell you, this is a remarkable hadith. It's a remarkable hadith because the expectation in life is for us to love what God loves, to hate what God hates, right? This is what Tawalla and Tabarra is all about. But it's flipped in this instance where the Prophet says that Fatima is not angry at what God is angry, rather, God is angry at what Fatima is angry. Yeah? And God is happy when she is happy. And so, what I want to do today is I want to try to understand this tradition. And if you look at the tafsir of this tradition, there are many ways to explain it. But I want to explain it from the concept of love, right? The concept of hub. Uh, the concept of hub is, is a fascinating discussion and it can be tackled in so many different ways. We've done it in the past when we described the title of the Prophet as Habibullah and how that, is, how that applies to us. And so today I want to look at this tradition, but understanding it from the perspective of love, right? And try to understand why God is angry when she is angry and why God is happy when she is happy. When we look at the concept of love, one of the things we have to understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects, He expects believers to have intense love for Him. He expects this, right? Um, and of course, just from a point of obviousness, but Sayyida being the greatest of believers, naturally she would have this quality of intense love, right? But we find that in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verse that I recited in the khutbah, He says in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 165, andada. He says that there are people who have taken partners besides God, right? They have taken competitors. So not necessarily partners, but people who compete with God. يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ they love these things the way they should be loving God, right? Now this could be anything, right? So if for example, I could love watching TV when it's time for Salah, but I'm still watching TV. God says, love me right now. And you're saying, no, I want to finish this, right? It could be our games that we play. It could be our phones. It could be our work sometimes. When I have the ability to pray on time, yet I decide not to pray on time, but pray later because I pick something else over God at that moment. When we have the ability, understand what I'm saying. Allah says they, there are people like this who take competitors, yeah, who take, take things and love them the way they should love me. But then He says, وَالَّذِينَ amanu أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ But for those who believe, they have this ardent love for God. Yeah? Like He could have just said, you know, it's interesting, وَالَّذِينَ amanu حُبًّا لِلَّهِ those who believe have love for me. No, but he says those who believe have this intense love for me, right? Intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what does intense love look like, right? Because maybe we say we love God, right? But Allah says that I'm not really happy with this. It's amazing. When I said in the intro, you know, that like there should be a desire for all of us to constantly want to improve ourselves. This is like another description of this, right? Because it's one thing to say I'm a Muslim and then to say I'm a mu'min. 
and then to say, I have taqwa. But then God says, no, but that's not enough. I want you to love me. And you're like, okay, I love you. He's like, no, I want you to really have intense love for me. Like God wants more from us constantly, right? And that's what makes God so beautiful because it's eternal. It's really eternal, right? Like where the, the journey never ends. The journey never stops. And so what does intense love look like, you know? When you look at our studies, what it's, our studies tell us is that a human being's love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his intense or her intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is demonstrated through a three-pronged manifestation. Okay? Allah's, our love for God can be, is manifested through like a triangle, you can say. Um, and each of these portions is required for that love to thrive. Right? So you can't have one of the three and say, my love for God is intense. But rather, the love of God, or our demonstration of our love for God, requires all three of these components for it to be intense and thriving. Now, a couple of things we have to understand. Number one is that these are not in a linear line where I need number one to then move on to number two. No, I can have all of these three things happening at different times but the expectation is that I have all three on at the same time and they're intense at the same time right so it's not a graduation level from one to the other and the other thing that we have to understand is that when we talk about this love right love for God love shouldn't be mixed up with faith right that I, I have faith in God no faith is is a prerequisite of love so I have to have faith but then it's not enough for me to have faith. I need to love having faith, right? It, it should be my passion. You know, whatever we love, that love motivates action. And if I could, if you don't mind, can you just move a little bit forward? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Sallu ala. And so it's something that we have to strive for, right? It's something that it doesn't come out just naturally. It's something that we have to strive for. But like I said, when we have something that we love, it's, it's a motivation for us, you know? Like, for example, you had a long day at work, but you love your kids, and now your kids have to go to karate. You don't want to feel like going to karate, but you take your kids to karate. Why? Because you love them, right? And so that love prompts you to act. Similarly with God, right? When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this love motivates us to act. But it's something that comes after developing a certain amount of faith in Him. So keep these two things in mind, right? That these things are not a graduation thing, nor is it something that comes naturally. We have to work on this. So what are these three manifestations of love, right? So the first station of love is what's known as the internal love, right? Internal love basically means that internally we appreciate and understand and recognize how much God loves us, right? It's, it's not to say that I love God, no, but it's to truly understand and, and appreciate how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. You know, we, we have to remind ourselves of this because I think sometimes as it is with anything that loves us, we take that thing for granted. Right? Like our spouses. Our spouses we know love us. But we take that my spouse will make for me a cup of coffee in the morning for granted. Right? That my spouse will do these things for me for granted. No, that's a demonstration of love. Appreciate it. Right? Acknowledge it. And so number one, we have to appreciate and remind ourselves of how much God loves us. Because we sometimes take that for granted. And secondly, you know, sometimes we forget how much God loves us because of the challenges that life throws our way. And so when life throws a hurdle after a hurdle, it's, it's easy to forget that in that entire process, man, God still loves me. He loves me very much, right? And so we have to remind ourselves of this. However you need to remind yourself, figure out a way to remind yourself at all times that God really loves us, you know? Because there is this notion sometimes and again, it's, it's how the material world works, that love is demonstrated when my needs are satisfied, 
right? So for example, when my spouse makes me a meal that I like, that in my mind shows me that she loves me. And that's how we equate things. And so when, my, when God doesn't give me what I like, I feel like maybe God doesn't love me. And so that's a, mis that's a misconception that we have to clear up, right? That love does not mean that God loving me does not mean that I get everything that I want, right? Because those who have greater knowledge and those who have greater capacity will give based on that knowledge and capacity of the, for the success of the thing that they love, right? Let me give an example. As a parent who has children, you have greater knowledge than your children do. You have greater awareness of what your children need. And so when you tell your child you can't have ice cream right now, the child may think my dad doesn't love me. But you as a parent are de depriving or declining your child from having ice cream because you love them. You understand? Yeah. So when God does not give me something, it doesn't mean that God dislikes me at this time. Rather, God's knowledge is so great that God knows that if He gave that to me right now, it would be harmful for me. Hence, God's demonstration of love is not related to what God gives us or doesn't give us. Right? And so we have to remind ourselves of this, that no matter what we are going through in our lives, God loves us. Yeah? Keep that in mind. This is an eternal essence of God. Hope is part of who God is. Right? It is ever flowing. And so the more intensity that I receive of that love is dependent upon how much love I give back. But even if I give zero love back to God, God still loves me. Yeah, this is a fact, right? This is why God provides. This is why God nourishes. This is why God sustains even those who, who, who claim they don't believe in God. God still provides for them, doesn't He? Right? That's a demonstration of love. And so it's that idea or it's that understanding and appreciation of how much God loves us. And this is something that we see in the life of Zahra. Yeah, we see, for example, in the beautiful tradition that once the Prophet sees Fatima the Zahra alayhim afdalu salatu wa salam. Salli ala Muhammad. That she was struggling, right? She was struggling and she was working hard and she was putting in effort and life wasn't easy for her, right? And he says in this tradition, or the tradition says that one day the Prophet saw her. Wa alayha kisa'un min ajillatil ibl. وَهِيَ تَطْحَنُوا بِيَدَيْهَا وَتُرْضِعُوا وُلْدَهَا فَدَّمَتْ عَيْنَا رَسُولِ اللَّهِ That she was wearing a cloak of camel hide, yani something rough. That means she didn't have light clothing, right? Um, grinding away at the millstone with her hands and nursing her son. That means she worked hard. She didn't have an easy life. She was working. She was struggling, right? Um, and we can equate that to anything that we do. We work hard, we struggle, and sometimes we feel like we're struggling, but how come it's not getting better? How come it's not getting easier? How come I just can't get ahead? Man, our role models have been through all this, right? In their own way, right? And so the Prophet, a tear came down in the eye of the Prophet when he saw her, because again, she is Sayyidatun Nisa'i Al-Alameen. You would think that if God loved her, Man, God would miraculously make that wheat turn on its own. Yeah, God would miraculously send... Why? Because God's supposed to love me by doing these things for me, right? No, right? The Prophet says, Ya binta, ta'ajjali mararat dunya bi halawatil akhira. Yeah? He says, Oh my daughter, enjoy the fleeting bitterness of this world so that you may enjoy the sweetness of akhira. Yeah? Then take it. Take whatever comes to you in this world and you will get something. Look at her reply. She says, Ya Rasulullah, Alhamdulillahi ala na'ama'ihi. Yeah? Wa shukru lillahi ala alaihi. He says that all praises to Allah for the bounties that He has sent to me. And I thank Him for His continuous blessings. She was going through difficulty. But she didn't see that difficulty as difficulty because in that difficulty she felt the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Yeah? And so please, number one, is this internal love. But not to claim this, that I love God. No, remind yourselves, remind ourselves. Allah loves us. Yeah? Doesn't matter. And that love is not equated to any type of material success. Right? Because if it was, then God loves these other people much more than us. Yeah? God loves Trump much more than us. And that's not true, isn't it? Right? And so we have to remind ourselves of that. So the first component of love is the reminder. To remind ourselves of how much He loves us. The second bit of love, or the second component of love, is action-based. Okay? And when we talk about action-based, this is to do that which we know God loves. And to stay away from that which we know God hates. This is part of love, isn't it? Right? Even in my relationship with you or my relationship with my spouse. If I say that I love you, yet I do things to hurt you, will you think I love you? No, of course not. Of course not. Right? Because love requires action. Love requires more than just words here. Right? And so... We find that the entire Qur'an, and this is where we can go back to the previous lectures we've had on Hub, the Qur'an is filled with verses of God describing to us the things that He loves, right? إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْتَوَّابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَّهِرِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَسَادِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا We know these things. Allah loves those who trust Him. Allah dislikes, hates those who are arrogant. Allah dislikes those who cause fasad. Right? How can I be in love with God when I do the things that God says He doesn't like? Right? How can I be in love with God if I don't do the things that God says He likes? And so the second part of my demonstration of love to God is by doing the things that God tells me to do. And avoiding the things that God says He doesn't want me to do, right? And this is a point that I, I emphasize and I remind, and it's really important, yeah? That it's a misnomer, it's a fallacy, it's a trick of shaitan to think that I can do whatever it is I want to do, but God knows my heart is good. No, it's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah, it's not true. If my heart was good, I would do what God wants me to do. Yeah? If my heart was pure, I would stay away from the things. But my heart is messed up right now. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It's just not aligned correctly. So align it. Right? Align it. I can't do something haram and say that I love God. And He knows I love Him. No, it's not true. Right? This is a trick of shaitan. You know? And I want to... I think in Rajab, you know, in the, in the series, I'm trying to come up with the series, but I think my Rajab series is going to be on shaitan. Yeah? Um, and in particular, the tricks that shaitan uses on us. And it should be interesting, I think, you know, because it's all around us, right? And, but this is one of the big tricks of shaitan, to, to let you think that, you know what? It's okay if you don't wear hijab. Allah knows your heart is good. It's okay if you don't keep a beard. Allah knows your heart is good. No, it's a lie. That's how shaitan tricks us, right? If it was really good heart, I would do exactly what God wants me to do. And that is the demonstration of a good heart. And so when you look at obedience that is required as part and parcel of love, there are many examples. The whole life of Zahra is an example of that, right? Where she was obedient to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. And so the second part of love is that action base. Now again, keep this in mind, right? Like, all three of these are not like a step after a step. And so this could be happening simultaneously. Sometimes one could be on, another couldn't be off. And when one out of three is on or two out of three is on, it's not yet perfect, right? But the perfect love of God would be when all three of these are vibrant and on. So the first one was this understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for us. The number second one was the action base. The third one... I call it maybe, you can, we can call it the essential love of God. Okay, it's, it's a different idea. The essential love of God um, is that love 
where you know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ they have this intense love for God this is one of the manifestations of it right so this ardent love is not a feeling right it's not a feeling we're talking about this essential love nor is it action based because that comes in that other love but this this love that we're talking about here is a result oriented love okay um, and what does that mean right it means that when I have this level of love I produce the qualities that display my unconditional love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pay attention to this I produce the qualities that demonstrate my love I don't have to say it but I do the things that demonstrate that I love him like what I have sabr yeah I have patience it is a pr- it is a product sabr is not a destination it is it is something that is created right um, I have steadfastness um, I have satisfaction I have trust I have hope that means I don't sink when something doesn't go my way I don't fall when things are hard but I have this absolute comfort in knowing that Allah loves me right and I produce the actions similar to that and so when life is difficult upon me I don't complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is a demonstration of my love to God yeah it's amazing right I don't have to say I love you but man I can handle it and even that is from love from God isn't it but I handle it and God knows because I handled it knowing that God loves me God knows that I love him amazing amazing understand this this is an amazing position maybe the hardest of the three but again it's not one after the other I can do this all the time sometimes we have this sabr sometimes we have this satisfaction sometimes we have this hope sometimes we have this but it's to have it at all times and this is where we see the demonstration of this intense love of Zahra for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right that her life we've talked about this in previous commemorations and celebrations her life wasn't easy right like we should never make this mistake that her life was easy if you just look at it from the Madhlumiyat perspective that's different but if you just look at it from her everyday perspective her life was filled with struggles you look at the first half of her life this is when Risala was taking place isn't it her father was hit with stones abused they were they were boycotted she lost her mother yeah she lost her uncle she lost her grandfather her uncle she lost her protector she lost all of these things right but she never complained why because there was this demonstration of this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it was part of sabr it was part of satisfaction it was part of having trust in Allah and then you look at the second half of her life filled with poverty indigence seeing her husband dragged through the streets all of these things yet she had these qualities in her and so she was able to produce the results that God that shows God that we love him yeah and it's these three levels that I want us to think about and reflect upon that if I truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I need to have all three of these levels or all th- not the levels all three of these manifestations of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again number one by reminding ourselves at all times how much God loves us by displaying our love to him by doing what Allah wants and number three by producing the qualities that demonstrate my love this is why you know even though I may not be a patient person I try it I fake it if I have to yeah even though I may want other things I display my satisfaction I don't complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I make dua but I don't complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these three levels are how we demonstrate our intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad (coughs) 
Now I want to describe these three stations of love in a slightly more philosophical way. Okay? We've done it in a very practical way. And in this practical is where the greatest lesson lies for us. Yeah? But I want to also describe it in a slightly more philosophical way. Because we're saying we're trying to understand that tradition. Right? That tradition said what? In Allah la yaghdabu li ghadabi Fatima. That indeed Allah most definitely is angered when Fatima is angry. And indeed Allah is happy when Fatima is happy. So how do we understand that? We understand that through a slightly more philosophical perspective. These three stations of love, yeah can be equated or can be seen transpiring in what's known as the three openings. Yeah? Al-Futahat al-Thalatha. Yeah? The Futahat al-Thalatha comes from the word Fath. Fath means opening. But when it comes in philosophy, there are three openings that a person goes through in their life. Right? The first is known as Al-Fath al-Qareeb, then there is Al-Fath al-Mubeen, and then there is Fath al-Mutlaq. Yeah. Um, again, we had talked about this previously. In all three of these levels, right? Now, so let's understand some things about these levels. The first thing we have to understand about these levels is that we do not automatically enter the first level. You have to work to enter the first level, right? Um, it requires a tremendous amount of faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and faith is always, always, always demonstrated through belief and action, never through belief alone, right? And so I may have all the belief in the world, but if that belief does not translate into action, it does not equal faith, yeah? Or at least the faith that will excel me in this world, right? And so for me to even hit the first, the first fat, the first opening, uh, man, I got to struggle. Yeah, I got to put in work, right? And as I would ask my teacher, how do you know when you've hit the first fat? And you know what his reply was? When you hit it, you'll know it. Yeah? And so when you hit it, you'll know it. Yeah, things will open up for you, right? The, the struggles will become easier for you. Um, life will become a journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. That's all you want is to get closer to God. And when you have that motivation, that's an indication that you're in a place that's good at that point, right? <coughs> and so the first thing we have to understand is that this is not something that we're already at the door of. No, we have to work at it. The second thing is that in each level, all three manifestations of this love have to be active, right? So I can't enter the first fatah unless all three manifestations are simultaneously clicking on all levels and I will enter the first opening. And then when all, second, all three of these formations of love or manifestations of this love are vibrant even more, because the more I rise, the more vibrant I become, the more intense I become, then I enter the second one. And then eventually I enter the third one. The first one is what's known as Fathul Qareeb, we said, the near opening. The near opening basically means that like, how do we understand we're in that? We understand we're in the first Fathul Qareeb when I see the beauty of God in everything. In everything. Right? It doesn't matter what happens. I see the love of God. And this is why I said to remind ourselves of how much God loves us is so important. Because there will come a time when I will be tested and if I do, if I am not in the habit of reminding myself how much God loves me, I will think at that moment that God doesn't love me. You understand? And this happens. I've spoken to people that have tremendous faith, tremendous faith, right? But they are they are faced with challenges, and at that moment, they ask the question: that have I done something wrong? Does God not love me? That's a natural question, yeah? That's a natural question. We think of that when we get a flat tire, yeah? But there are people who only, that thought only comes into their mind when something tragic happens, right? But no, like we have to remind ourselves that no matter what happens, God loves me. But in this Fathul Qareeb, I see the beauty of God in everything. 
in everything. You insult me, I see the beauty of God in that. Why? Because at that moment, I am developing myself. You're lowering yourself. Yeah? I don't have to respond to you the way you respond to me. But the beauty is there that God has now given me that opportunity to rise in rank. I see it. I appreciate it. Right? That's Fathul Qareeb. And so in that moment, you see the beauty of God in everything. The second is Al Fathul Mubin, the manifest opening. Right? What this, at this level, the lover of God begins to demonstrate the qualities of God. Yeah? So Allah is Rahman, I become merciful. Allah is Kareem, I become generous. Allah is Sattar al Uyub, I hide the false. I live that divine life, right? I have the akhlaq of God. This is what the tradition says. Takhallaku bi akhlaqillah. Adopt the qualities of God, right? And so we adopt the qualities of God. And in every way, I become. I embody the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And that's the purpose of God describing Himself with all of these names that we see here. What's the purpose? So that I learn these qualities and adopt these qualities in my life. That's the second stage. The third stage is Al Fathul Mutlaq, like the complete opening, right? Um, the absolute opening. And at this stage, you basically become one with God, right? Um, Hard for us to understand, you know, but this is where the essence of God is now found within me, right? And the fire of God burns in us, you know? We've given this example, and I think sometimes because maybe like we're, like I'm far away from that, it's hard to understand what that means, you know? But like if you look at the example of a fire and how to know something, right? Like you say, how do we know something? You say, well, Let's take the example of a fire. How do you know there's a fire? First, you see a smoke, right? Let's say I look out my window, I see a smoke, and I see fire trucks going. I was like, there's a fire somewhere. I know it, right? And so that's one way of knowing something. The second way is now I actually see the fire, and I can feel the heat of the fire. I know there's a fire. The third way is when I burn myself. <laughs> you don't want to do that, but that's how the intense love of God is in this. You're one with God. You're one with God. Like, you feel constantly the love of God if you understand that that's fantastic I think we can comprehend it inshallah one day or maybe many of us are feeling it it's this station that's important what I'm talking about okay this final station Fathul Mutlaq in Fathul Mutlaq right so as we said that in all three of these stations these three manifestations of love have to be vibrant right in this third stage naturally my three manifestations of love are on full charge right so i love god in these three ways completely completely right um, but what's important to understand right is that this completeness of this intense love that we're talking about when it comes to this third stage is not just that i do the obligatory acts with this intense love. Focus on this last few minutes, right? That it's not that I, just, that I do the obligatory acts, the wajib acts, whatever the wajib acts are. That means I pray Zohar with intense love. I pray Asr with intense love. I fast with intense love, expect it. But to reach this finality of this third stage of Fathul Mutlaq, not only do I worship and obey God in the obligatory things with intense love, but even when it comes to the Nawafil and Mustahab acts, I engage in them with intense love. Yeah? Understand this. That means I wake up with Salatul Layl, not because, ah, Sawab che, reward che, no. I wake up for Salatul Layl with intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray the fifth 34 rakat because I have intense love for Allah. I fast Mondays and th because of my intense love for Allah. And Allah says, look, this is a hadith al-Qudsi, that Allah says that when one engages in the nawafil, not the obligatory, the hadith is long, the hadith says prior to this that it is impossible for a person to earn my love by anything other than the obligatory acts. And this goes back to that thing that I was saying, that I can't do something haram and think that I love God. God says you can't earn my love unless you do the obligatory acts. 
But then God says after this in this hadith that there's the only way to get completely close to me, fathul mutlaq, absolute opening, is when you engage in the nawafil. Yeah? When you engage in the suppurgatory, when you engage in the mustahabbat. My brothers and sisters, the obligatory takes us away from Jahannam. The mustahabbat gives us darajat. Always remember that. Yeah? But in this section, you lo- you'd love to do the mustahab acts. And when one loves to do the mustahab acts, Allah says what? Hatta, when they do these acts, hatta uhibbahu. He says, when they do these mustahab acts with intense love, God says, that is when I love them completely. Yeah? God says, I love them completely. And then, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ And when I love them completely, كُنْتُ سَمْعُهُ أَلَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ He says, I become the ears with which they hear. وَبَصَرَهُ yeah? الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ And I become the eyes with which they see. وَلِسَانُهُ الَّذِي يَنْتِقُ بِهِ And I become the tongue with which they speak. When we said we become one with God, what were we talking about? Yeah? We were talking about this. My eyes become the eyes of God. My ears become the ears of God. My tongue becomes the tongue of God. My actions become the actions of God. Allah says, إِن دَعَانِي أَجَبْتُهُ وَإِن سَأَلَنِي أَعْطَيْتُهُ When they call out to me, I answer them. When they ask me for something, I give them. They become entirely one with God. If we understand all of that, then we understand more clearly why Allah says, Allah, why the Prophet says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَغْذَبُ لِغَذَبِ فَاطِمَةً yeah? It's not that Allah subhanahu that Fatima is angry with what no Fatima had reached that stage of fathul mutlaq yeah complete opening complete manifestation with god to that extent where she did everything with intense love for god to that extent where god says now i hate what fatima hates yeah and i love what fatima loves sallu ala Yeah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad. And this is the lesson we take from the life of Fatima today. Yeah? That her love for her for God was so intense that this was the result of her love. If we only engage in loving God the way God wants us to love him, my brothers and sisters, we too will notice things in our lives that it was hard for us to imagine in the first place. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He hasten the return of our Imam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He forgive the sins of our parents and loved ones. (coughs) For those who are going through difficulty, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to end their difficulty. For those that have asked us to pray for them, Ya Allah, accept their hajat. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم رحم الله من كرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد <تصفيق>